In July of 2013, at the San Diego Comic-Con, filmmaker Zack Snyder revealed that his planned follow-up to Man of Steel would see Superman facing off against Batman. Snyder would say, Ben provides an interesting counterbalance to Henry's Superman. He has the acting chops to create a layered portrayal of a man who is older and wiser than Clark Kent and bears the scars of a seasoned crime fighter, but retain the charm that the world sees in billionaire Bruce Wayne. I can't wait to work with him. And Warner Brothers would state that, We knew we needed an extraordinary actor to take on one of DC Comics' most enduringly popular superheroes. His outstanding career is a testament to his talent, and we know he and Zack will bring new dimension to the duality of this character. In October 2014, ambitious plans were unveiled at a Time Warner investors meeting, projecting releases for 10 DC-branded titles, including plans for Batman to appear in Justice League Part 1 and Part 2. Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice premiered in Mexico City on March 19, 2016, and was released in the United States on March 25, 2016, to mixed reaction. Studio executives had reportedly given an unfinished rough cut of the movie a standing ovation at a private screening. The enthusiastic response led Warner Brothers to add an additional three Batman movies to the roster for the DC Extended Universe. It was hoped that the actor could be locked into a 10-year deal in order to create the DC Extended Universe around Batman, who was also set to make a brief appearance in the scheduled Suicide Squad movie. Agent Patrick Whitesell was asked for how long did he think his client would want to play Batman. He replied, Well, he's contracted to do at least Justice League 1 and 2, so at least three times wearing the cape. And there's a script that he's written that is a really cool Batman idea, so that's out there as an option. Jeff Johns is a brilliant guy. You know, he, I consider him to be the most valued resource on all things, you know, comic book. And every time I like something in a comic, I always mention it. He goes, oh yeah, I wrote that. So after a while, <laughs> now I just think he's bull****. <laughs> and he says he wrote everything. You know, he and I are, are working together on something, and I really am excited about it, and I, I love him. He's the best. The quote, he and I are working on something together, would seemingly confirm suspicions that the star had been offered the opportunity to take the franchise in his own direction, within the ongoing continuity of the shared cinematic universe. Kevin Smith would then say on his co-hosted podcast that Ben has been working on a solo script with Jeff Johns as well. Last conversation I had with Jeff Johns, I was like, are you working on it? And he said, yeah. I said, what's it like, man? How do you co-write with someone? And he's going, we just break it up. He takes halves and I take halves and then we write and then we switch material, and then he goes over mine, and I go over his. That sounds so fun. Affleck had, of course, already proven himself as a talented and masterful filmmaker with the titles Gone Baby Gone, Argo, and The Town. And the news was positive in all ways. The highly anticipated project was in great hands. Warner Brothers' chief executive officer would speak at CinemaCon to a gathering of movie theater owners from around the world, saying that, We've set up a great foundation for our DC slate, which includes at least 10 movies through 2020. During the Warner Brothers presentation at the San Diego Comic-Con in 2016, was finally officially confirmed as the film's director, as it already been long reported. You said you know, you know Harry would do Batman a solo project. It's not that I'm in a hurry or not hurry. I'm, that's, what I, that's also on my plate right now is Batman. That's what I'm working on, trying to get the script right and just trying to get... The, the movie I think is going to be called The Batman. The Batman. Yeah. Okay. At least that's what we're going with now. All right. Yeah. I might change it. I, th I think that's the best. Um, I think that's about it right now. That's that's all I got. We're working on the script. The script is going well. I'm really excited about it. And um, I assure you that when there's anything to, that develops, I'll, you'll hear about it. Details and characters would remain a secret, and that the director and studio were looking to execute the definitive Batman film. That they wanted to tell the ultimate Batman story. And to do so, they'd be utilizing all the big guns from Batman's rogues gallery, including the Joker. The world's greatest detective aspect of Batman is more present in this story than it was in the last one, and will probably be expended upon further in a Batman movie that I would do. I think all the great Batman stories are, at their heart, detective stories. That's why they feel like noir movies in a way. Somehow feels like it could be the Maltese Falcon. But at their heart, good Batman stories are, like I said, detective stories. That same month, as press were invited to the set of Justice League, the would-be Batman director was asked for information regarding Warner's potential release date for his solo Batman film. I think they have a date for it, 
Although, I don't know if I would necessarily be able to make that date because I don't have a script that's ready yet. My timetable is, I'm not going to make a movie until there's a script that I think is good. Because I've been on the end of the things when you make movies, when you have a script that's not good yet, and it doesn't pan out. I have a script. We're still working on it, and I'm not happy enough with it yet to actually go out there and make a Batman movie, for which I have the highest standards. I would say, that's something that would have to pass a very high bar for me. It's not just like, yeah, that might be fun, let's go try this out. One month later, as the interest in the project intensified, actor Jared Leto, cast as the Joker in Suicide Squad, told the Toronto Sun, I hope it's an introduction and not the end because I could easily just play the Joker a couple more times and then retire, because it's so fulfilling and so creative and it's so imaginative. It's really difficult to think about doing anything else. I think it would be incredible to see Batman and the Joker go head to head. This Batman and this Joker. I mean, I don't know, that might be too much, but that would be fun. Then posted a video of Deathstroke on his social media pages in what seemed to be a reference to the solo Batman film. The 30-second video shows Slade Wilson, also known as Deathstroke, standing on what appeared to be some sort of military plane. DC's ruthless assassin had appeared in Season 2 of Arrow, played by Manu Bennett. Bennett was a force of nature as Deathstroke, but we're still excited to see the DC Cinematic Universe's interpretation of the ruthless assassin. What is it about Deathstroke that makes him a uh, compelling uh, villain or antagonist for, for Batman, both in Justice League? Uh, you know, it's hard movie. to say exactly what it is. I think, like, the reaction to Spoke for itself, like, it just seems like a great uh, counterpart to Batman. You know, they're similar in terms of skill sets, they're similar in terms of tone, and, and uh, he's never been uh, uh, utilized in a movie before, so it's really, really exciting. What about Joe, the, the casting on Joe? He's great. He's, gonna, he's great, and he's going to. This revelation fit into place with the fact months earlier, Arrow showrunner Mark Guggenheim had said on his Tumblr page when asked about the return of the character that the character of Slade Wilson is currently tied up in another DC project. Frank Miller was asked for his thoughts on the DC movieverse and said that he'd like to see the Caped Crusader in a movie that succeeded in losing the toys and focus more on the mission and to use the city a great deal more. In regards to Batman vs. Superman, Miller said, I'll just say, thanks. What can I say? No, actually, I'll withdraw that. I'll say, you're welcome. Greg, the next Batman, we're working on it. It's one, of, yeah. it's one of those things that's really frustrating because, like, with Live By Night, it took me a year and a half to write it and get it ready, and I work really hard, and it's just nobody gave it. No one was like, where's Live By Night? Right, yeah, right. Or it was Batman, they don't know I keep on getting like, where's the... Batman. I'm like, Whoa, I'm working. <laughs> Give me a second. And if Soon after the Kimmel appearance would withdraw from directing the Batman. His statement would read, There are certain characters who hold a special place in the hearts of millions. Performing this role demands focus, passion, and the very best performance I can give. It has become clear that I cannot do both jobs to the level they require. Together with the studio, I have decided to find a partner in a director who will collaborate with me on this massive film. I'm still in this, and we are making it, but we are currently looking for a director. I remain extremely committed to this project and look forward to bringing this to life for fans around the world. The studio were then said to be eyeing a short list of directors that included Matt Reeves, who had just released War for the Planet of the Apes. A rewrite of John's and Affleck's screenplay had reportedly just been handed in by Chris Terrio, the Oscar-winning scriptwriter of the Affleck-directed Argo. It soon became clear to all concerned that Reeves was looking to use his own story. The casting of Robert Pattinson as the new Batman would make the news in May. Discarding all previous development, Reeves was given the time to work on his own script for the film that would have no attachment to either the Batman vs. Superman or Justice League films that had gone before. Jay Olivia, director of Warner animated features The Dark Knight Returns, Assault on Arkham, and Justice League Dark, would write that his version of Batman in his solo movie would have made fans proud. And the artist would also put out a tweet to correct other rumors saying, was the best Batman script I'd ever read. Ben had a kick-ass story, and I believe that the audience and fans would have loved it. In terms of actual plot details from sources with knowledge of the screenplay, cinematographer Robert Richardson, who was attached to the movie, explained that 
He was going more into the insanity aspects. So I think you would have seen something a little darker than what we've seen in the past, and more into the individual who's inside Batman. He was entering into a little more of the Arkham. He's going into where you keep everyone who's bad, and everyone is shifted. Actor Joe Manganiello would tell of some of the more intriguing aspects to the plot. Manganiello told Yahoo Entertainment, It was a really dark story in which Deathstroke was like a shark or a horror movie villain that was dismantling Bruce's life from the inside out. It was this systemic thing. He killed everyone close to Bruce and destroyed his life to try and make him suffer because he felt that Bruce was responsible for something that happened to him. Manganello was on course to reprise the role of Deathstroke in The Batman, having already appeared briefly in Justice League in a scene that would later see its context changed with re-editing. In fact, the original Justice League post credit scene, re-edited and restored in the Snyder Cut, shows the setup what would have been. Manganello had already explained why Deathstroke was after Batman. In the Batman script, Deathstroke loses his son and blamed Batman for it. Which is why, in the restored end credit sequence that appears in Zack's version, that was what we originally shot. It was Lex Luthor getting a hold of Deathstroke and letting him know, I know who killed your son, and his name is Bruce. Bruce Wayne. I really, really didn't want Deathstroke to have powers. I wanted him to be just a man who experienced a tragedy. And instead of becoming this altruistic utopian who believed that people could be better and a better society, he was just this nihilistic killer. And there was a line in the sand between the tactics that he was willing to use and the ones that Bruce was willing to use. Speaking of Deathstroke's past, he said, The idea is that they were both trained in the League of Assassins, and that one went one way and one went the other. And I just really thought that that was going to be a really cool dichotomy to see. This reveal clarified why the League of Assassins logo was glimpsed on Deathstroke's sword in the Snyder Cut. Here's Manganello speaking to Josh Horowitz on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast about how he became the proposed lead villain of the piece. Let's go through the history a little bit, okay? So you were cast, you weren't cast by, by Zach first, was it? No. It was first Ben, when Ben had his Batman script. I don't know if it was done or if he was working on it. How did that happen? Did you have to audition? Did you come in? Did he have you in mind? What happened? You know, I, I just come off of a... Of, of two very successful Warner Brothers movies and the Magic Mike movies. And so uh, I was, you know, I was in the mix over there. Yeah. Um, so every, all the executives over there, when, when it came up that Ben, I guess, wanted to, you know, wanted to make Deathstroke the villain, then this discussion happened, as, as I understand it, where um, the executive said, you know, who would be great is Joe. And then Zack Snyder, who knew me from years previous, said, yeah, I know Joe. Um, you, sh you know, and they recommended, they vouched for me, uh, which set up a meeting with, between Ben Affleck and I. And Ben told me, you're the only person I'm meeting with. Um, and we had a discussion. We watched the Tim Miller video, uh, that, that, you know, the Tim Miller piece that got him uh, Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah, he made the that that like Arkham Origins Deathstroke versus Batman video. Uh, you know, Ben and I we we talked about that a lot and um and how that was going to relate to the action sequences. And uh, we talked specifically about you know one big action piece and what that was going to entail and kind of like you know not in great detail but kind of like painted the broad strokes and yeah. talked about character. I had no idea why I was there. I mean, I assumed secret project that shoots one day and. <laughs> August and then the whole movie for six months in May. I kind of went. I think this is Justice League of Batman, yeah. but I didn't know the character. So, um, so that was it. A week later, they called me back and said, um, "We need you in London. We need to start fitting you for your suit." So I was flying back and forth from London that whole summer, uh, and then at the end of the summer, I came back. We finished the suit, uh, tailoring the suit, and, and then Zach fired up the you know the transport plane for the justice league with all the smoke and, and he said Let, let's go let's go test this thing out and so zach and ben were behind the monitors and so was everybody else in the justice league like everybody came because they heard <laughs> they're testing out the new villain for ben's movie Amazing. and so it was like you know momoa and, 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 and you know i mean and, the, and uh, gal and 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 
you know, and Ben and, and Ezra, everybody lined up and was staring at them as I went and just did my, I did my thing, you know, what, which is that footage that Ben then released onto, he, he leaked it onto the, onto the web. Right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, funny, funny, just side story. While I was in London, you know, I brought Sophia and we went to tea, high tea. And um, she took a picture of me or we took a little picture together and it got out that I had shaved the sides of my head and had a goatee. And the CSI level detectives that are the Justice League DCEU fans put together, well, he's in London, his hair looks like that, his facial hair looks that, what's shooting, what could it be, and figured out that I was desperate. That's amazing. And then how soon after were you shooting your bit for Justice League? Well, that was that, that trip when we did that test footage. Same trip. Um, we then, uh, it was like, like within days, the crew moved to Monaco. We went to, uh, um, uh, we went to the Monaco Bay, you know, Monte Carlo and, right. uh, and, and they got this huge yacht you know, Lex Luthor's yacht for us to shoot on. And, and I mean, it was pretty quick. You know, so, we, we were there, we shot that. And then, um, and, and then, and then, and then six months later, I, you know, got notification that Batman wasn't, wasn't going to happen. Right. The scene that I shot, the, the original ending scene for Justice League, I shot with, with Zach because Zach was the director of right. Justice League. And this was going to be the end sequence, you know, of his, of his movie, but it was originally to tease, simply tease me as the villain, uh, and I would show up then later uh, in, in Ben's movie. It was just it was just to set that up. Well, and then and what's in Zack Snyder's Justice League again, without ruining it, is clearly a tease. Like yes, it's it's a the, the dialogue is much more of a tease into that Batman movie that sadly we will, I guess, never see. Yeah, yeah, right. probably probably not. I would imagine. You know, we talked about Tim Miller's Arkham Origins, uh, and then that was going to be a basis for what the combat was going to look like in the Batman film. So Ben and I definitely talked about that. Um, and then I read most of the, the Batman script as it was at the time when I was shooting Justice League that summer. I, was, I, was, I read a bunch of it, and I knew what was what was going to happen it was um it was the the premise as, as you could it, as you could kind of like infer from the the proper uh justice league and credit scene um slade is summoned by luthor who uh offers a peace offering of information to slade he knows that so basically slade had lost his son and he blamed batman for it Batman had a hand in it, and uh, Luthor summons him to his yacht and gives him a key piece of information that Batman's secret identity is Bruce Wayne. So now he's setting loose this unstoppable force on Gotham City and Bruce Wayne. And the film, the Batman film, was going to be kind of similar to like, you know, imagine if David Fincher's The Game was real. You know, uh, one of my Slade favorite movies. Systematically dismantles Bruce's life and starts murdering all the people in it uh, as he destroys his finances and uh, just basically paints him into a corner. Um, uh, uh, you know, and there was like a big, huge showdown, I think, between it was like Batgirl, Batgirl jumps in to try to help Bruce because Deathstroke is so fast that uh, he can anticipate Bruce's movements. And there was this huge fight in Gotham City um, where, where Batman is like, you know, uh, completely afraid because he realizes he's, he's met someone who can take him. And, um, and then that leads to this big climactic battle through the streets of Gotham City at the end. But, um, but it was, yeah, it was like a real like psychological thriller where Deathstroke was kind of like, a, he was like a horror movie villain. You know? you know, the thing about it, I think that a lot of people don't realize is that I actually wasn't technically a part of the original Justice right. League. Uh, I was cast in Ben Affleck's Batman to play the villain, mm -hmm. and we shot a scene to tease our matchup mm -hmm. in the Batman film. 
that was going to appear at the end of the film. So that scene was then reconfigured to tease a Justice League 2 movie that didn't happen. <laughs> Zack restored the original scene that we shot uh -huh. to tease the Batman movie that never happened. And that's what fans will get to see at the end. At the time, you know, once Batman got canceled, I kind of wrote it off it and gotcha. thought, okay, this is over. Mm -hmm. um, I had actually shifted gears and started working with the studio on an origin film for Deathstroke that also didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I just let it go. And yeah. unfortunately, I don't own the IP. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a very prolific director, Gareth Evans, who I'm uh -huh. a huge fan of. I worship at the altar of Gareth Evans, mm -hmm. who did the Raid and Raid 2. Uh, we had a long talk one night on Skype, um, and he wanted to shoot an origin film for Deathstroke with I mean... me in the in kind of in the in the air of the Raid. Uh -huh. um, that didn't happen. Uh, I always feel unfulfilled and unsatisfied because we didn't get to make that film. I think that film would have blown minds and I think the fans, it would have been exactly what the fans want. And even people who weren't fans of it would have loved that movie and what we were gonna do with it. So what you're telling me, Joe, is that we need to start a petition to get the Deathstroke origin movie made. Sometimes those things work. February, 2020, during an interview with the New York Times saying, I showed somebody the Batman script. They said, I think the script is good. I also think you'll drink yourself to death if you go through what you just went through again. The spirit of that as a guy who's vulnerable, as a guy who's aches when he gets up in the morning, as a guy who like feels a lot of psychological sort of torment, I thought was a really interesting approach to, to playing a hero. And that was, um, that was how, you know, what we wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I, I really, I had a better time on Batman vs Superman, which I really enjoyed doing. And Justice League was, <clears throat> Unfortunately, like, um, you know, touched by, you know, some personal tragedy and, uh, of, you know, uh, death in Zach's family. And uh, it's just, like I say, sometimes things sort of work in jail and sometimes they just, uh, they said, do you want to direct and star in like a solo Batman movie? I found that I had kind of at just some point lost my enthusiasm or passion for it. You know, I was like, this should really be made by somebody for whom it's their wildest dream, you know, come true. And for me, it was, it had become like, something different and, uh, and it was clear to me that it was time to move on. But uh, I do have some really fond memories, particularly of Batman versus Superman and how exciting that was and how uh, energizing it was. And great Batman. Thank you very much. Great, and I'm genuinely bummed that we're not going to see your The Batman. Can I you, think Robert's a great actor. He's, he's going to be great. He's going to be absolutely fantastic. Can you tell me what your The Batman would have been? Uh, I, well, we had a script. It was a whole thing. You know, really what it was for me was, and I like the script. I wrote it with Jeff Johns, who I have a lot of respect for. Um, it just so happened that like I had done a couple of those movies and I kind of lost my passion for it. You know what I mean? I kind of lost my passion for telling those stories. I got interested in telling stories more like this. And it just seemed like, you know, very clear to me that if you're not going to be, if it's not the most important thing in the world to you, you're not going to make a very good movie. A movie deserves to be made by somebody who's dying to do it and can't wait. And uh, that wasn't me at the time. So I moved on. In conclusion, I would say that the Batman never getting off the ground is a real missed opportunity for fans of Batman, DC Comics, and cinema in general. Ben's skills behind the camera, his handling of drama, suspense, and character-driven story, not to mention his already proven on-screen presence as the Dark Knight, leads me to believe that even in 25 years from now, people will still be saying to each other, you know which movie never got made but really should have? The Batman. Thanks for watching.